Here we are at our trip down the Porcupine River. We have soaking wet conditions out here. Just gonna follow the spine and cut right through the ribs. You gain control over your boat by paddling either faster or slower than the current. Gourmet delicious meal. Oh, oh. Here we are at Selwyn Lodge on Selwyn Lake and this is our starting point for our trip down the Porcupine River. And I'm just going to show you how to rig up a three-way swivel so you can fish lake trout without downriggers and without a dipsy diver late in the summer. First I'm going to just cut two pieces of line here. Then I'm going to tie clamp swivel onto the end of my line. And this is what I'm going to use to attach my three-way swivel to. I'm going to tie on one of the pieces of line that I cut off and then tie on another clamp swivel to the very end. And that's where my lure is going to go. A small MEP spinner or a small William spoon like this, it'll actually allow it to go deeper from my experience. Since the fish aren't down 100 feet today, I'm going to pop on this uh, large William spoon right here. Now this bottom line here is going to be where I'm going to tie on my weights. I like to use another clamp swivel at the bottom because that allows me to fine tune how much weight I can put on. If you want to use pencil sinkers for this rig, they work really well too and I find they're, they're less likely to get hung up but this is what I have here today. A three-way swivel rig and get your line down deep for late summer Lakers. What a beast. Real beauty, we're gonna save that one for dinner. Maybe we can get something even bigger today. Not a bad fish whatsoever. We have what I would call soaking wet conditions out here. It's been raining for 20 hours straight almost. First thing I did was I set up a tarp and I'm going to show you how to light a one match fire in soaking wet conditions. Basically what we're looking for right now is standing dead trees. The core of a standing dead tree will be dry. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a standing dead, we're going to split it, I'm going to go under the tarp, I'm going to whittle matchstick sized pieces out of there, little pieces that will take a flame. Right there, see that? That'll take a match, no problem, and that'll light. So here's our tinder, and here's our kindling. And I'm just gonna split maybe four or five other uh, pieces that are just one step bigger than this. See how having a good, strong knife is key? All right, so now I'm at the edge of the tarp, and I'm just kind of blocking this with my body here. Just throwing those tinder pieces, just basically sprinkling them on top. And I'm still trying to block the rain from it. Larger size kindling pieces on top of the tinder. Putting these on like teepee style basically. We'll get some of these larger pieces on here. Once we get these going, we're good. So there we go. Once those start burning well, I'm gonna start putting some of the wetter pieces of standing dead on and uh, they'll catch now. So we got a fire going, soaking wet conditions, one match. That's how you do it, just take your time, whittle out the center, tinder, then kindling, then your larger pieces, and you're good to go, you can save your butt. We're gonna clean this pike. I'm gonna do it the way that I learned from the Inuit in the Western Arctic, how they do char is the way I'm gonna clean this up. And we're just basically gonna hang it over a fire. I'm gonna make a little teepee and then wrap it in a tarp and it's gonna be nice and smoky and preserved. And it tastes pretty delicious too. First, I'm just gonna scale it out and then I'm just gonna cut right along the spine, leaving the, the tail attached still. And do the same thing to the other side. Cut the fish right off there. I'm just gonna do a bunch of little cuts like this. So it should look about like that. Just gonna take three sticks like this for my teepee, and I'm just gonna lash them together right now. This is going to be the piece that I actually hang the fish from. 
But in this case, I only need two sticks because I'm only doing one piece. And that's where we're gonna hang our fish from right there. Now that my smoking rack is rigged up, I just lit a fire at the bottom and I'm gonna let that burn down again till we get some coals. Then I'm gonna start putting the damp beaver chewed aspen and birch and whatnot on it. We're just gonna add some seasoning. And we got our fish on there, our rack set up. So the next step is we're gonna wrap a tarp around this whole rig. The tarp was a little bit smaller than I thought, but what I did was I went and got a couple pine cones, and that's what I'm kind of using to button this thing up. See at the bottom here, I've left just a little spot there for me to stoke the fire. You just want to keep the fire really small. We got our own little smokehouse. By tomorrow morning, should be good. Well, it's the next morning. I let my smokehouse run uh, throughout the night. Uh, if you remember at first I had it connected at the tail, well I noticed the skin was ripping, so I just pulled it off and I hung it like that. Some delicious smoked fish. That's lunch for today. So good. It's here on the Porcupine River, northern Saskatchewan, and I was able to jump shoot a yearling duck I'm gonna roast this over the fire and I'm gonna do it in a way that was taught to me by the Cree natives in Moosonee, Ontario. It's called Sakaban, which technically means the goose that are strung up and spun. I'm gonna pluck it out here. Best to take the wings off at the first joint. And there's our plucked duck. Admittedly, not the best plucking job. It's good to get a good fire, good coals, and have a lot of wood in store. What I'm going to do this time, I'm going to tie in, uh, another stick from one tree to the other tree that's going to be more or less right beside the fire and I'm going to hang my duck off that. Cut a little branch off a tree, thick enough to support the duck's weight. That's nice and sharp on either end. Cut open the parachute cord and just uh, take a couple strands out of it. Now I'm just going to tie a bowlin knot at the bottom. We're going to take this stick that we sharpened. We're going to stick it right through there. We're just going to loop it right over that stick. Just gonna tie this off right here. And we have a uh, roast duck, the Cree way. Make sure it keeps spinning. So every once in a while, just spin it back up. But it'll spin back and forth like that for a while. I'm thinking the duck's gonna take maybe an hour, maybe a bit more, depending on the heat of the fire. Okay, so well, that's been roasting for a while. Good. Absolutely delicious. What I'm gonna do here is because we pulled over in what was one of the only spots to camp on this lake on the Porcupine River system here. When you have no trees, especially on a cold, wet day, you're gonna wanna get your tarp up and how do you do that with no trees? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. It's basically a lean-to style. So I'm gonna put it on a bit of an angle to the wind. These are gonna kinda of act as uh, the trees we don't have here. First, peg down two corners of your tarp. You're gonna want it to be nice and tight. Then, tie paddles to the front corners of your tarp and peg down the rope. Nice and tight. Oh, oh. My back peg came out. If it's too windy to hold your pegs in, use rocks to secure them. Okay, I'm gonna go get a couple more rocks from the river. I'm gonna just create some tension there between the rocks and the pegs at the back and this at the front. I'm putting my pegs on a bit of an angle that holds them better. Now believe it or not, it'll stand up to a pretty good wind, this thing. As long as you have these rocks holding the pegs down. Now we're going to put a couple paddles under here just to hold it up and that'll help uh, deflect some of the wind off of it, make the whole structure a little more aerodynamic. There we go. Now we have a place where I can come under here, stay dry, get out of the wind, get out of the rain. Next step is to get a fire going. And that's how you set up a tarp with no trees. That's a good eating side.
size one. Look at this one. That's getting pretty big. The pike just jumped and the hook gashed through my finger. I saw earlier today that uh, I was attacked by a northern pike. This is like an adventure medical kit. You can buy them in the store. Now, I usually go through it and add a few things to it or at least make sure I know what's in there before I head out into the wilderness. Stopping the bleeding, that's a key thing. Pressure, stop the bleeding. Get that bandage up, protect it from more infection getting in and put some tape on it tightly to hold that pressure on. This comes with these alcohol wipes. Now, alcohol wipes hurt and that's how you know it's working. You really want to make sure you give that a good disinfection. Good idea to just wipe the whole area down too. For the pain, I recommend a good single malt. Probably not the best for the coagulation. Now what we're going to want to do is get some gauze on there. And just tie it like fairly tightly right over top of the cut. And then the best thing you can use, duct tape. Duct tape is a great thing to use, especially when you're out here. Add some waterproofing to it. Change the bandage like that every day, duct tape it up. When you're out here, your injuries are magnified. You're using your hands all the time. So take care of your cuts when you're out here, avoid infection, and you'll be good to go. Thumbs up. There's a few key whitewater strokes you want to know when you're going to tackle some whitewater and that's whether you're going solo or you're going tandem. So the first one we're going to start with is the draw. Basically the draw is you're going to paddle out to the side, tuck your elbow in towards your body and draw the water towards you. Draw stroke when you're paddling solo will side slip your boat. It'll make your boat drift directly sideways like this. So the opposite of the draw is the cross draw. You reach over draw the water in and slice your paddle up forward like that. But when you get into those rapids and they're really pushy, you want to slow down. And in white water, you gain control over your boat by paddling either faster or slower than the current. Another really important thing to know is the backstroke. And that's basically just paddling backwards like that. One of the key things in white water that'll make you more comfortable and will get you down the rapids is knowing how to brace. Let's say I'm dumping to my right side like this. I'm going to slap the water and push myself back up. The high brace will save you from tipping to your off side. Tipping like this, I'm going to throw my body weight over this way and catch my body weight with my paddle. And that'll save you from tipping. And one more really key whitewater stroke is the pry. Use the gunnel to balance the paddle. And when you're in whitewater, a really good thing to do is pump. Another thing that's gonna help you in the rapids is a spray deck. It's basically a tarp that's custom made to fit over the top of the canoe. And that means if you bomb a big wave, your canoe is less likely to fill up and swamp with water. Those are a few things you wanna keep in mind when you're gonna tackle some white water. Learn them, get out there and practice and have some fun bombing some rapids. So we just got to camp and I caught this uh, nice lake trout, caught it on Black Lake today. And I'm just gonna clean it up here and I'm gonna show you my favorite way uh, to cook lake trout. First thing you gotta do is fillet it and cut right through the ribs, right to the end there. The same thing on this side to clean out this lake trout. I'm gonna cook it with the skin right on. I'm gonna toss the evidence here. We don't attract bears. I'll rinse off in the lake too. And after you have your fish cleaned, the next step is to slice some onion. I like to slice the onions really thin because I like them to get cooked pretty well, but I like a lot of onions with the fish. It's really delicious. And step three, we're gonna break out our fish basket grill. We're gonna get some sliced onions and a little bit of seasoning on our lake trout filet. And we're just gonna load this right up with onion slices and squeezes down the fish. And this slides right over the end. And step four, place your lake trout over the fire. We're just made a little spot with the rocks. If you already have a grill in your fire too, you can rest this right on top of the grill. And that's gonna cook up nicely. 
Mm, it's already starting to smell amazing. There we go. And step five, eat. Now the key to the perfect bite is you take a bit of the fish and you get a bit of the onions with the fish. Mmm, that's good. Relatively easy way to prepare fish and just absolutely gourmet, delicious meal. Look, we already got some northern lights coming out. 